So I said I was closing down my shop. I am not closing down my shop. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm the only store owner who feels this way. You love to hate it, but you hate to love it. And that is basically owning a magic store today. Like if you, if you told me when I was younger, I would own a magic gathering store, I would be so happy. I would say, wow, that's really one of my dream things to do. And it would be amazing. And I would be building the store of a community. I thought I would probably think it would be really about all the physical community and people coming in to play. But as you actually own a store, you realize it's all, all about online sales. And the community, you don't have to give an F about because they're not buying stuff anyway. They're buying all their stuff from Amazon. So the community, and I, I, I kid you not, the community will ship boxes of cases of cards to your shop, pick them up at your shop from another competitor. I, I shit you not, this has actually happened to me. Where it's like, oh, did you get any packages for me? I was like, um, yeah, we have something in your name. And, and again, it is my friend, I understand, but he probably should have told me beforehand. He actually told, uh, at that time I had an employee, I wasn't actually at my shop that often, but I am at my shop when it comes in delivery time. And then this other package got delivered at the same time and it was for my friend. So I just thought, okay, well, I'll sign for it. And I didn't know what was in it until he opened it. And literally it was the same product that we had sold. And I asked him, why didn't you just let us help you buy the product? And he said, oh no, it's just easier this way. <laughs> and then he was hiding the product from his wife. It was a very, I think it was Time Spiral Remastered. He bought like a few cases of that and he didn't want his wife to know because his wife is a stay at home wife, mom. So then she would get the packets and get upset at him. So then he sent it to my store and then he opened it and had a good time. And you know, I can't. It's wild, right? It's wild. I, I kid you not. This is what happened for Time Style Remastered. Because that was a very expensive set to buy. I remember thinking like, ooh, we could get it. For, and, and that was a, a set where my distributor did not have a good price on it. Uh, Amazon was way cheaper and it kept reloading every time. I remember that specific set was a very difficult set to sell as a store owner because of the reload. Now, you might ask, why don't you just do something better? Why don't you just, you know, start focus more on your law firm, focus more on your business. Now, if you own a business, um, you're going to understand there's only so much time you can put in the business. And that's why many business owners, they only work five to 10 hours uh, a week because you can't act. There's actually not that much stuff to do. The business is going to run itself. Your employees are hopefully independent. And the only times that you actually interfere in the business, you know, and it's not to micromanage the employees, is if the employee has a, a problem, maybe there's a client who's really mad and you, the employee made a mistake, well, they need to hear from the owner, say, hey, we're sorry, we're gonna refund you your money, we'll give you a credit, what do you guys want, right? Or, you know, when it's time to collect on unpaid debts, that's when I have to make those phone calls and they can often, you know, often get a little bit bad. Just a tiny bit. So um, in my personal opinion, it is, um, it's tough running a store and I don't really know what draws me back to it all the time, except every time, you know, we make a new hire, I do a really great interview. I meet an individual who's passionate about it. And there are a lot of passionate individuals. I get that fire in my stomach and I don't really get that no more. You know, life is easy. You know, like the struggles I had, I, I think I mentioned that story in San Francisco. When I graduated law school, um, not the first company I worked for, but the second company I worked for, we were in San Francisco and it was just a bunch of young guys living together, just hanging out. You know, we had a lemon tree in the back, made fresh lemon juice, you know, fresh cookies. There's uh, the ice cream place down in the deli. There's the pizza place we like. And that was the best time of my life. A lot of people say college and you know, college was fun. High school for many people the best time in their lives. That no, that doesn't compare to like when I was part of a startup in San Francisco, and it's just a bunch of bros hanging out. And I've always thought that you know, hey, like in a business model, that's what it should be. But I haven't really found that, and I'm still looking for that because that's 
that was the best time of my life. You know, I had, we were at all, in, we were in two homes together. So the female employees were in one home and the guy employees were in another home. Our bosses were never there. And we had, uh, so the, the, we had three different levels, right? So one level was just mine. I had a whole basement. It was a huge basement, by the way. It was like, you know, I could fit like eight beds in the basement if I wanted to. Um, and then the backyard, you know, so goes out to the lemon tree. And then there's a conference room in the third floor. So the whole floor is mine, minus the conference room. We had to battle for that. It's kind of awkward when you're like, you know, sleeping and then talking in the conference room. I don't know why the conference room was there. Uh, the second, the first, so that's probably a basement floor. The uh, first floor was the uh, graphic designer, the CFO, and our kitchen and dining area. So that's where we typically would eat. Um, now we also did conference meetings and dining area and so on, but whatever. And then the uh, top floor was for the social media graphic designers. And then there was a, a home that was, uh, was we Airbnb'd it. This was back in the day when it was cool, the Airbnb. Uh, the other homeowner, so it was the same homeowner that we dealt with, um, he also had a, a similar home and that was where all the uh, female employees were in a very similar, similar type of home. And you know, that's, um, it's the best time of my life, honestly. And since that time, I've really, really tried to get back to that point where, you know, it's a, just a bunch of people and they have a common objective and they're going to do it. And you might think, oh, don't you own a marketing agency? Don't you own a, uh, are you going to create a law firm for the same reason? Those are very different type of business models. Like a law firm, especially is a very different type of business model. Um, people are not going to put in the time. I mean, it's, it's very pay per hour, right? So if you've ever hired a lawyer, you know that they're pay, basically paid per hour. So it's very based on time. And if you don't pay someone for their time, they're not going to work uh, rather than passion. You know, a lot of people become lawyers and paralegals, not because they're passionate about justice. And you know, I can tell you great stories from law school where people, when we're beginning law school, there are people who are talking about, you know, why did you go to law school? Oh, I believe in justice and I want to help the poorest people. And then those people then work for the biggest law firms. <laughs> you know, they don't give a shit about poor people as soon as the money flows in. So everyone talks a big game about helping people when they are first year law students. I guarantee you third year law students, they're all only worried about the money. Um, I, at least that's my experience in law school was, you know, Hey, these, these, we had like pseudo law firms, like these people, like I, I, you know, when we had, they had all these big dreams of helping and changing and, and civil rights and all these amazing dreams. And then now they're all just working with the person who pays them the most. What that, that's not passion. That's something else that's greed. And so I've always wanted. And, and you might be like, oh, didn't you have that? I had that experience as an employee. So at that time I was an employee, I owned some equity in the company, but not substantial. My bosses were always in Brazil and, and so on. I mean, they were always traveling. We'd rarely see them. They would just give me a bunch of money and tell me, hey, you have six months, so just don't spend it all. And then I had to, you know, you know um, so my first job out of law school was being a comptroller. And that means I, I do finances and uh, I forecast, I do Gantt charts and so on. So I predict how much money we need, how much money we need to raise and so on. I've been looking for that, like, hi, that was like amazing as an employee. I've been, and it's not even that I want that experience for myself again, because I know the experience would be very different because I'm the boss this time around. I want that experience for a group of friends and you know, the life, the, the friendships that we made um, they're, they're lifetime friendships and I don't really know, um, how should I say it? It's not something that I, it's something that I hope more people have. And I don't think it's something that a lot of people have the ability to, um, experience. Anyway, it, it's crazy that I'm still doing this whole store thing and it's crazy. I understand. Uh, to many of you, it might be completely nonsense because you have no idea why I complain every day about my store and why I complain about employees, but we keep hiring more of them. 
and more of them. And every single ep every single year, is we repeat, rinse and repeat, re rinse and repeat. Oh, magic sucks. Oh, now the oh now magic's hopeful. <laughs> now magic sucks. It's a cycle where there's something I want to get from this. I'm trying to create the startup that I was part of because that was such a positive experience in everyone's life, especially mine. <laughs> but it was a very positive experience. And it's, it's like being an artist. A lot of people quit being an artist because it doesn't pay money. It's really hard to be an artist, but that's what they're passionate about. But they quit being an artist because they don't get enough money from it. And they're not, their art is not popular enough they can sell for a lot of money. Obviously I own an art studio. I know all about that, right? What you're passionate about, I think more people should do something that they really love doing. And for that to happen, and then for them to be given the opportunity to create a business that makes money, that feeds families and so on. And a lot of times that requires somebody who puts money in, an investor, if you will, into the initial company. And that's what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to create a team that will hopefully operate on their own and be able to share the pretty life-changing experiences I got to share back when I was in San Francisco. It wasn't a long time. I think it was a year and a half, maybe, maybe at most two years, depending on how you calculate it. But it truly was a life-changing experience where I wish more people would have something like that. Anyway, that's why I keep round and round we go, round and round we go, you know, it's a, it's almost like deja vu in an endless loop we go, right? <laughs> but hopefully this new hire becomes, you know, hopefully I'm not making a video six months from now. <laughs> hey, how my new hire lost me half a million dollars. Bye guys.